Jeremiah chapter 41. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal. So here is a man of the kingly line. The kingly line has been taken to Babylon. The, the kingly line has been disrupted. God said, no more will there be any of the children of Israel to be on the throne, but through the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. So, the politics have been put down by Babylon. By God and the princes of the king so there's still royalty in Jerusalem they all have not been carried into Babylon Daniel was of the royalty even ten men with him came on to get Eliah, the son of Ahikim to Mizpah that's the man that that the king of Babylon has put as governor over the land. He's the new ruler. He's the new leader. And there are people who don't like Gedaliah. And they're all going to get upset. Sound familiar, America? I think they would say, that's not our governor. Or maybe president. And yet Babylon set it up and God set up Babylon. God said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Told Jeremiah, if, if you surrender to Nebuchadnezzar and your army, your life. If you don't, war, famine, and pestilence. And there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. And he's going to kill them. And Solomon writes all together in the book of Proverbs, be careful who you eat with. I've been in many Baptist fellowship meals, and the people at those meals that I sat down with stabbed my back. Then arose Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah the son of Helkim, the son of Shephiah, with a sword and slew him whom the king of Babylon made governor over the land so there is murder there is an insurrection in the land because we don't want to get a liar our leader that's not our leader he stole the votes and yet God's in charge of it all Look at this. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him. So it's not only, all right, here is this leader by Babylon, but anybody that was in cahoots, anybody that obeyed God. I know Romans 13 hasn't been written yet. I mean, yeah, yeah Romans 13. Those that obeyed God and obeyed the government. Ishmael kills him. Even with Gedaliah at Mizpah. And the Chaldeans were found there. And the men of war, the army. So Ishmael did not like the new government. And didn't like the people following the government. And it came to pass the second day after you had slain Gedaliah. No man knew it. I guess there was no media or maybe a cover-up and there came certain from Shechem from Shiloh and from Samaria even four score or eighty men having their beards shaven they're in mourning their clothes rent having cut themselves well if these are Jews the law forbade them to cut themselves. They're doing what you call penance at the Catholic Church. The law forbade the cutting of the flesh. 
with offerings, incense, in their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is gone. But they don't know it. As far as what they see, the land has been overpowered by the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. Maybe we come to God, maybe make supplication to God, maybe it's gone. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, went forth from Mizpah. That's the, that was the new government headquarters, capital of the land, chosen by Gadaliah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gadaliah, the son of Ahikam. And it was so when they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael the son of Nethali slew them. Look, look, verse 6, he's weeping. He's faking it. This man is a murderer. He's a rebellious murderer, and he'll slay anybody who's not for his cause. He's defiling God. He's defiling Jeremiah. He's defiling the government. And cast them into a midst of a pit, a hole. He and the men that were with him. Eighty men. But ten men, seventy, have been killed. Ten men were found among them that said to Ishmael, slay us not. They're being killed. For no reason. For we have treasures in the field. They don't know if it's true. I know they're just trying to save their lives. Wheat and a barley and oil and honey. Whether it's true or not, don't know. So he, Ishmael, forbear. Okay, so you're here for the for the get a liar, the new government, which I don't like, and I killed him. I'm killing the people that are with him. I'm killing these people that are going to see. Oh, you got riches for me? Okay, I'll, I'll keep you alive. There is no reasoning but of sin and rebellion of Ishmael. If it's good for me, field, wheat, barley, oil, honey... I'll keep you alive. Because we did not get the ruler that we wanted. We didn't get the Republican in the White House. Friends, Jeremiah is playing out in America and the world today. Now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men, 70 of them. We don't ever find out what happened to the 10. Whom he has slain because of Gedaliah. But, you know, I'll save the 10 alive because they can give me money, and give me fame, and give me all kinds of things. Was it which Asa the king had made for fear of Asa, the king of Israel. It's a bomb shelter. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, filled it with them that were slain. It may not have been a very big pit. Or there may have been other people that have been slain that has not been recorded. Or there have been a lot of people who were with Gedaliah that he slew. Because it said up here in verse number uh, where is it? verse 3, Ishmael slew all the Jews. So if he filled this pit that was made for protection, Ishmael has slain many. You know how many people in America were slain 
over the Revolutionary War and the Civil War? The Revolutionary War, we're not going to pay T-Tax. We're not going to pay T-Tax. But we're going to pay all the registration tax. We're going to pay some tobacco tax. We're going to pay sales tax. We're going to pay income tax. We're going to pay grocers tax. We're going to pay tax on tax. And make sure you get your... Uh, 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 your yard sale tax and you know your tax on your produce and tax upon tax upon tax upon wait a minute what happened to we weren't going to pay tax on tea and how many American citizens died in the Revolutionary War and then you know these people they're, they're, you know the American they're going to give it to you it's for the American freedom Build a patio on your property or build your child a, a playhouse on your property without the government's permission and you'll see that government come and tear that down. Freedom. Carry a gun in America without a permit or a license and see how much freedom you have. I don't go with this American nonsense. My home is New Jerusalem. And I will be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. My home, New Jerusalem. I saw a man today, a, a, a minister. Everybody must go buy a gun. Buy a gun. Buy a gun. Why? There's no guns in New Jerusalem. You're going to be wildly upset. There's no American flag. There's no Republicans. And there's no guns in New Jerusalem. You're going to be highly upset. Ishmael has upserved the entire authority of the Babylonian government because he doesn't like what God put into place. God put Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, told Jeremiah to tell the people, give in to the, to the Babylonian government and I will give you life. And the Jews are doing it. The Jews are obeying Jeremiah. They're obeying God. And this idiot comes along and starts slaying them. Ishmael carried away captive, verse 10, all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah. He has added captivity unto captivity. Ishmael, come on, let's be free. All right, you're, you're going to with me. I'm going to force you guys to come. Even the king's daughters. Ah, what did he want them for? Does it say the king's sons? You got you got exes going on right now. What do you say? What do you mean, Styler? If it's a male child kill them. If it's a female child, keep them alive. Why? Everything about Ishmael in chapter 41 is for himself. About himself. And the care of no others. Oh, you got honey for me? Alright, I'll save your life. You, you got summer fruits? For, okay, I'll save you. You ain't got nothing for me? You're dead. This is a carryover of the sin of Judah carried over into Ishmael. And all the people that remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, had committed to get Eliah, the son of Ahikam. These are the people that, okay, God said stay. God said obey Babylon. Okay, we'll do it. This man comes along. And it's going against God, going against Jeremiah, and going against all those that do right. By the way, he had a sword. He had a weapon. I watch out for people who want weapons. Who desire to have a, to have a permit to get a gun. I've known a couple Baptists that had guns in their fruitcakes. I wouldn't even trust him with a water gun. Ishmael the son of Nethemiah carried away them captive. 
and departed to go over to the Ammonites. He's going to leave the land of God if you obey the Babylon government as God prescribed, telling Jeremiah, and we're going to go over to the enemy, the Ammonites, the children of Lot. It don't make sense. Verse 11, but when Je Jehanan, the son of Kareth, and all the captains of the forces, military, that were with him, heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done. So you see the Holy Spirit says, Ishmael is evil. You know what God says about many Americans today, even American Christians? Everything you're doing is evil. You don't like President Biden? That's tough. Romans 13 and Peter says, obey the powers that be. Pray for your leader. I don't care if you like him. I don't care how you feel. I don't care about the Republicans. I put that man in office. He's the one I want in office. I never asked your opinion. I don't care what you think. If you do anything against the government, it's evil. Plain and simple. The biggest crybabies in America today, oh, you the government I want. You don't deserve the government you because you want freedom, but you don't want the freedom to serve God. You don't go out and witness and preach on the street and tell people about Jesus Christ. You want free fish, free beer, and all kinds of entertainment. And maybe I'll give God a Sunday morning if I have nothing else to do. Friend, things are going to get worse and it's going to get plenty more worse before Jesus comes. So it's evil. Then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah. So we got another war. Babylon's come and taken over Judah because of the sins of Judah. God prescribed it. God put Nebuchadnezzar and God said, if you surrender to the government, Nebuchadnezzar put Gedaliah in charge, the governor of the land. Ishmael has come and usurped the authority of that government and has killed the man and the Jews that are with him. He has slain 70 other men. He's taken them captive. Now he got the army now going after Ishmael. He's made it worse. And found him by the great waters that are in Gideon. Now it came to pass when all the people which were with Ishmael saw Jehanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captain of forces, the military, the army, that were with him, they were glad. Why were they glad? Because they were taken against by force. Ishmael has wrought confusion. Wait a minute. I, I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jeremiah said that God said, if we if we turn ourselves over to the to Babylon, the Chaldean, we're going to be in the land and it's going to be our lives. Since we we've, we've given ourselves to the Babylonian government and the Chaldeans, as Jeremiah has said, well, what's this murder? What's this captivity? And they're making Jeremiah look like a false prophet. And that's exactly what Satan has using Ishmael. If he can place doubt into the preaching of Jeremiah, because the preaching of Jeremiah is Judah and Jerusalem has been destroyed. Okay, you cannot take that Say, well, it's not going to happen. All right, so the so the devil, Satan, could say, "Well, God told him, you know, I'll give you. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say peace, but I'll give you peace if you surrender to Babylon." And now it looks anything but peace. So all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah. 
cast about and return and went unto Jehoiada the king. So Ishmael, all right, he don't have his followers no more. They were under fear. Now, as far as we know, there's only 11 men that are with Ishmael. Jehan has got a whole, look at verse 13, captain of forces, plural. But Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, escaped from Jehanan with eight men. He lost two. He had ten. And went to the Ammonites. Then took Jehanan, the son of Kareth, and all the forces, all the captains of the forces, military, that were with him. And all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael the son of Nehemiah, from Mizpah, after that he had slain Goliath the son of Ahikam, even mighty men of war, military, and the women, and the children, now we mention the children, and the eunuchs, Daniel was a eunuch, and of the king's seed, whom he had brought again from Gibeon. So Jehanan has rescued the Jews. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chimham, which is by Bethlehem in the land, to go to enter to Egypt. Because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them. Because Ishmael the son of Nehemiah had slain Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon made govern the land. Now, Here's the problem. We want to live in peace. We don't want any problems. That's what that's what these people are saying. Now, in the verse 18, the close of the chapter. What is Nebuch what is Nebuchadnezzar? What are the Chaldees going to do to us? For their governor being murdered by Ishmael. Now he has brought fear. Ishmael has brought a civil unrest in the land, and it is all personal, all for him. And that's what you're going to find in a lot of these Americans. It's all for themselves and nobody else. Plain and simple.